Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 9. Listen to the interesting words from the Old Testament and God's promises. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a certain ritualistic rhythm that comes with being a priest. After years of going through the lectionary cycle, which repeats every three years, you begin to get a deeper appreciation of the way that scripture works. Likewise with the seasons of the church here, not unlike the unfolding of nature's own seasons, there's an understated pattern and movement that you begin to notice if you are attuned to it. And that pattern can be fortifying and comforting. And once you have presided at enough Eucharists, buried enough friends and family, and celebrated enough Christmases and Easter's, you can better appreciate the subtle moments that encapsulate what this whole church project is really all about. Our baptismal question today, or part six of our series, is one such moment for me. After the candidates have been presented, after the evil powers have been renounced and commitment to Jesus proclaimed, the priest turns to the entire assembly and asks this question. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in Christ. I'm continually struck by the awesome responsibility that accompanies the congregation's response. We will. And what I love about this particular moment in the baptismal service is that it reveals something special about the sacrament. You can't be baptized in a vacuum. And no one, once baptized, walks alone in this life ever again. Baptism is bigger than you. It's bigger than the priest. And it is bigger than the specific congregation gathered on the day of the ceremony. Even though all of those elements are necessary for a baptism, what is happening is larger than them and than that certain moment in time. Baptism is more than washing dirt off the body as the reading from 1 Peter states. 
It is, at its core, the renewing of the covenant with God and renewing the bonds of affection with the cloud of witnesses both near and far. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis, and it references the first covenant that God made with humans and all creatures on the planet. Namely, that no flood water would ever again destroy the earth. The water of baptism reminds us that water is a basic necessity for life as we know it. And a reminder that water can also be powerful, destructive, and deadly. When we are baptized, we experience both of these aspects of water, the new life that the gift of water provides and our symbolic death to a life of disconnection and disintegration. When Jesus went out to John to be baptized in the River Jordan, I don't think that he went there to have dirt washed off of his body, nor to be cleansed from sin. He was going to remember and renew the covenants that God has made with God's people, with Noah, Abraham and Sarah, David, and all of the unnamed people, and flora and fauna that have come before. And he was also dying to a false yet prevailing narrative that it was Caesar's and Caiaphas's world. He's dying to that in front of witnesses who would both hold him accountable and support him in his mission to wake up the world to God's way. For me, turning to a congregation and asking them, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? That reminds me of this larger story. And when we respond, we will. We are consciously choosing to join with our ancestors in the faith who have said yes to a covenant with God. And we are forever bound to those with whom we live out this call and this vow. Sometimes I wonder if people would respond so fervently if they knew how important I think the answer is. Baptism is indeed bigger than us, but it is not beyond us. Saying yes to supporting a baptismal candidate means praying for them something that all of us can do, anytime and anywhere. It also means serving as a companion on the journey of transformation that begins with baptism and leads us to where Jesus is and where Jesus is going. Companions, break bread together. Companions learn together. They walk together. They go to the hospital together. And companions get each other's back when times are tough and when energy flags. Companions hold up the light of Christ 
to their siblings when all else seems bathed in darkness. And they actively work on being in right relationship with one another to make sure that this witness is felt as much as it is known. Saying we will means showing up for one another as a reminder that the ties that bind us are not the things the world uses to categorize us. Race, gender, financial status, country of origin, native language. We are bound by the waters of baptism, the waters of creation, the God who has made and remade covenants with us time and time again, and above all, by the grace and passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has called us to be members of his one body. When we live into this vow, and when we make this vow real in our daily lives, then we see more fully how the kingdom of God is among us, and we gain strength to keep on proclaiming it. This new season of Lent can be a wonderful time to explore how you are currently supporting your fellow companions in this journey. What might you do this week to connect with them and to walk with them more fully? How open are you to the support that other members of the body are trying to give to you? Baptism is bigger than any one of us. Let's remember that this Lent. And let us do the things that only we can do to support each other in Christ. In the beauty of our worship, in the silence of our hearts, in our committee meetings, show us your ways, O Lord. As we struggle to live together in peace, as we are tempted by inertia and complacency, when we forget whose we are, show us your ways, O Lord. When many suffer while we eat well and sleep peacefully, when many beg to be noticed while we seek solitude, when many long for shelter from the storm, show us your ways, O Lord. Walk with us as welcome little ones into the world. Walk with us as we care for those who ache. Walk with us as we walk with those returning to you. Show us your ways, O Lord. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen.
Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.